This should be the happiest day of your life, Sandra, said my best friend as I tried to tell her my feelings of sadness. Ah, uh -uh. why are you crying? Children are a blessing. You should be happy now, said my very Nigerian mother as I tried to express to her my feelings of low mood, anxiety, depression. I remember that day like it was yesterday. I gave birth to the most beautiful girl, Zoe. 03-03-16. No one wants to address the elephant in the room. That black and ethnic minority mothers are more likely to have postnatal anxiety and depression but are the least likely to access support. I got home and quickly realised that I wouldn't be able to run to the shops quickly. I wouldn't be able to do all the things that I once would be able to do because now I was responsible for another human being. Yes, my daughter, now daughters because I have two, was super quiet, so good, peaceful and I was reminded of that all the time. And that's why I couldn't complain. I realised very quickly on that this was something that I shouldn't be speaking about. This was a taboo topic. And this should be kept and pushed under the rug. I realised very early on that this was something that I was not allowed to speak about. I had to put on my happy face, smile and wear my mask because I had reached the pinnacle of womanhood. I had reached the happiest moment of my life. I had reached everything that ever would make me who I am today, a mother. No one wants to address this elephant in the room that black and ethnic minority mothers are 13% more likely to suffer with postnatal depression and anxiety and the least likely to receive treatment and support. No one wants to address this. In frustration, I started a very small WhatsApp group that grew from 10 mothers, 20 mothers, and now we have thousands of mothers on our social media platforms that have subscribed to our newsletters, that have attended our workshops and events. The Motherhood Group. I have spoken directly with thousands of black mothers and I've asked them the same question over and over again. Why do we not speak about maternal mental health? within the black community? Why are we the least likely to access and receive support even though we are suffering with postnatal depression and anxiety? After reading and hearing some of the responses of hundreds of mothers, the reoccurring themes were the lack of trust within the healthcare services, the taboo of mental health within the black community, and of course, the strong black woman myth. Many mothers within the community have expressed there is a lack of trust between the healthcare services and us within the community. We have learnt not to trust them or rather we deem them rather untrustworthy. There is a notion of them versus us and we think that if we share with them, you know, an, a, a personal or an intimate view or opinion or a thought, they might just use it against us. Black women believe that we are constantly being judged by the colour of our skin. So then why would we then open up about a subject matter that they could use to our detriment? So it's believed. For example, when I was pregnant with my daughter and I would attend my appointments with my um, midwife she was not the friendliest but that didn't bother me to my horror and disgust she created a fabricated story and used that against me based on prejudice she made me feel like my words did not matter she made me feel inadequate 
and voiceless for the most part. What was supposed to be a monumental, precious moment in my life was tainted in institutionalised racism and inequality. I would have expected her to talk to me, to ask me the right questions, to listen to me. But she didn't. After sharing my story with all of the mothers in our network, I realised that my story was not a standalone event. In fact, it echoed many, many other black women's experiences during their pregnancy, their labour experience and postpartum. I mean, one mother in our network even said that she was a nurse and she has firsthand witnessed discrimination against black and ethnic minority mothers in the hospital. Another mother said that the microaggressions that she experienced in her pregnancy and labour experience has actually put her off from having any more children. That's not what we get. Oh, black people, we don't have mental health problems. Don't speak about that. They'll think you're crazy. These are some of the things that I've heard from within the black community when it comes to mental health. We can't ignore the fact that mental health is just something that black people for a very long time have not spoken about. Even myself, when I became a new mum, I had never heard of postnatal depression and anxiety. I had no idea what that even meant. That's not what we get. Uh uh, pray about it. Oh, come on. That's not our illness. That's some of the things that I would hear when I try to express myself. The notion that mental health is something that black people don't suffer with is ridiculous. Mental health, maternal mental health sees no race, it sees no colour, it sees no age. And that's something that we need to speak about within our community as well. Many cultural traditions and cultural norms that are implemented within the black and ethnic minority community are not always positive to our well-being. For example, as a Nigerian black British woman, I'm expected to stay at home after giving birth for 40 days. 40 days! That's a very long time for somebody who may want to go out, see friends, get out of the house for a bit. These do not serve our mental health or impact us positively. We need to speak about the strong black woman stereotype, aka myth. The need to appear strong all the time. The notion that we don't have um, feelings and emotions and we can't be vulnerable is a lie that needs to die when I was a pregnant woman when I gave birth and I was crying in my room alone and people would ask me am I okay I had to pretend I had to wear my mask and continue the look and the feel of the independent strong black woman that was put out there that was detrimental to my mental health. I was unable to break down in front of people and tell them the truth with the fear of them seeing me as a weakling. The fear of bringing shame to myself and to my family that I was unable to handle motherhood. That's something that, you know, women should be able to do with ease. After speaking to many other black mothers, it was so evident that black mothers and ethnic minority mothers were really unaware of where to go and how to receive support. There were many stressful family expectations that were placed upon them, cultural traditions and factors that didn't really encourage receiving mental health support and also feeling like we're not listened to because even those who did kind of express that they wanted support or needed support or didn't quite feel okay their words were dismissed they wasn't actually taken seriously and also the notion of the strong black woman october 2020 the motherhood group, the social enterprise that I created four and a half years ago, launched the first ever UK Awareness Week highlighting black women's maternal mental health. We wanted to reiterate to black mothers that it's okay to not be okay all the time. That yes, mental health is something that impacts us too. 
and it's okay to ask for support and demand for support when you feel like you're not being taken seriously. Ethnicity and culture can play a massive impact on how and when black women receive maternal mental health support. Although very disappointed, I was not surprised to hear that my experiences and the mothers that I've spoken to in the motherhood group network echoed a study by Jane Henderson called Experiencing Maternity Services. They surveyed 24,000 mothers and they found that black and ethnic minority mothers, particularly African mothers, felt like they had fewer home visits from their midwives. They were less likely to feel spoken to, to be understood. They were less likely to feel like they had been treated with kindness. And they had the least confidence and trust in staff. An idea I would like to share with you is about building mutual trust between the black community of mothers and healthcare services. It's by extensive participation in community groups that seek to support black mothers. Bridging the untrustworthy gap between mothers from all communities and maternal mental health services. Services should ensure that all mothers can have adequate access to support and care throughout their pregnancy and of course after to ensure that they have a positive experience. All women having a child should have the opportunity to experience this most profound of human events in the most positive way. Sadly, this is still not the case for every woman and the maternity services still have much to do to ensure that whatever the situation, the woman is truly placed at the centre of her care. We need more participation in workshops, events, focus groups that gives black mothers essential tools to thrive, not just at home, but in all areas of their life and of course their mental health. Black mothers need to learn, just like I needed to learn, how to spot the signs of postnatal anxiety or depression or any other mental health challenge in ourselves first and of course those around us so that we know where and when to seek support. We need to learn how to vocalise unfair treatment like I did when I received that treatment from that maternity care. We need to improve services engaging and interacting directly with black mothers and black communities. We need to speak more openly, more loudly, more widely about maternal mental health within the black community to eradicate all of the myths and the stigma so that we can access the support that we so rightfully need. We need to keep the conversation going and normalize that it's okay to not be okay all the time. And this conversation will eventually force services to take our voices much more seriously. It's only an elephant in the room if we keep it an elephant in the room.